Droplet formation is a popular microfluidic application. The precise control of flow and the associated suspension allows for controlled mixing of fluids within a droplet and the precise nano micrometer manufacture of droplets. However, understanding how droplets form requires precise control over the microfluidic geometry, relative flow velocities, as well as understanding the fluid and channel properties. First, let's start with how we simulate droplet formation. The microfluidic droplet formation we are simulating here uses two immiscible fluids. Immiscible fluids are fluids which do not mix and form a homogeneous mixture. So a common example is oil and water. Oil will form a layer on the surface of water and will not mix through the solution, which is often why an oil spill is so dangerous as it remains on the surface of the sea and affects much of the marine life because it doesn't dissolve, it doesn't disappear. So knowing that our two fluids are miscible, we can treat them as two phases, studying the phase flow. This studies the fluid interaction and the effects on flow. This is explained with the Cahn-Hilliard equation. The Cahn-Hilliard equation describes the diffusion of fluids with regards to the chemical potential. Chemical potential in this sense is the concentration of the fluids with regards to the transition region lengths. This aims to stop fluids from increasing and decreasing in concentration over the simulation which is important for droplet formation as we don't want droplets suddenly forming out of the blue and also just dissolving and disappearing completely. Several implementations of the Cahn-Hilliard equation are possible, but for this video we're going to look at the sharp interface model as we're studying droplets with defined boundaries and edges. The movement of the phase field is defined by the Navier-Stokes equations with additional phase flow terms. If Navier-Stokes is not used, the movement will be diffusive. So now we understand the basics of two-phase flow and how we are going to simulate it, let's look at the problem in hand. We are going to replicate a four-way channel which pinches our miscible fluid forming droplets. In Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier. I have created a flow focusing computer aided design with a T shaped junction where the water and oil can enter and then a smaller channel expanding off into a larger chamber. For this method of droplet production, the smaller channel is fundamental to how the droplet is pinched and ultimately the size of the droplet. Adjusting this part of the geometry can dramatically affect the droplet size when using flow focusing devices. This CAD was created in Autodesk Inventor whilst I was at the University of Kent and I imported it into Gmesh, a fantastic open source meshing software. Using Gmesh we can label the boundaries so we can assign them boundary properties in our code. For example, inlet velocities, outlets and where phase fields are generated from. More can be seen in the code available on my GitHub. Check the link below in the description. Once we have a mesh, we need to convert it from our Gmesh format to XDMF for Fenix, our CFD software. This is simply done by the script I made earlier. Again, all code is available on my GitHub and there's a wiki too. This script will take all the relevant values for the mesh into 2D in our case, as well as forming another file with our label domains. All we need to do is label them in our code, which is as easy as this. Before we add any further parameters, we need to set the inlets and outlets. Looking at the mesh, this demo requires flow of phase one from the central inlet and flow of phase two from the top and bottom of the channel. The speed at which these two flows meet will create pinching. However, we need to consider the fluid properties and boundary. So some of these properties you've seen in my previous video on the Navier-Stokes equation, the fluid properties such as dynamic viscosity, density, and velocity. Here we have two sets for the two flows. An additional fluid term is surface tension. This is the tension between our two immiscible fluids and is important to define how stable our droplet is once formed. With the boundary, we have a new term called contact angle. In this example, contact angle is referred to the angle at which fluids reach before releasing from a boundary. 
This is important in how the fluid enters into the pinching and also how our droplet reacts with the boundaries in that smaller chamber we talked about earlier. This is sometimes called wetting, so the wettability of our microfluidic device. In the wet lab, surfactants and other chemicals can be used to adjust the contact angle and the surface tension to produce stable droplets. But here we can easily change those variables in code. Now we need to set the phase field parameters. So we have phase field mobility coefficient, two times 10 to the minus nine, and interface thickness, 1.4 times 10 to the minus five. Here we have the phase field mobility coefficient, which is the interface movement between the two fluids, and the interface thickness, which is the thickness between those two fluids, almost like a transition zone. Both need to be tuned as too large, the phase flow will not model the correct dynamics, and too small, there may be instabilities in our CFD. The latter parameter, interface thickness, is mesh dependent where the minimum sale size of the mesh needs to be smaller than that of the transition zone. If not, the simulation can fail as the interface cannot be calculated. It's simply too small. So with the parameters set, let's run the problem. In this problem, I'm using the basic solver, which we discussed in Understanding the Navia Stokes solver. Check it out if you haven't yet. Essentially, the basic solver will calculate turbulence, which is required for this problem as we're producing droplets over time. Here we can see we have produced droplets. The droplets are fairly large, but if we wanted, we could adjust the geometry, change the fluid and boundary domains to affect the droplet size. It is fundamental that any changes we make in simulation can be carried out in the real world experiments. Some changes may not be possible due to the biocompatibility or chemical stability. We might be limited to the fluid properties where our optimization would focus on the microfluidic geometry, which we'll look at in future videos. Make sure you like and subscribe for that. So to conclude, we have a working droplet formation demonstration. We can easily modify the fluid and boundary domains and see how droplets change shape and size. Additionally, different geometries can be imported and prototyped before doing wet lab experiments, which saves a lot of time in the lab and consumable costs. Ultimately, it should be always be noted that simulations will be limited by the parameters we use, therefore might not be accurate to the real world problem if the parameters are poor or completely unrealistic. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.